I have been really fixated on the 18th century silhouette for at least the last year. And I know it seems complex because of how foreign the patterns look, especially if you're used to more modern sewing and the basic generic modern pattern shapes. But I'm convinced that there has to be a much more simple route to it. Most people made their own clothes, and buying patterns wasn't really a thing. If everyone was expected to come up with their own patterns, it logically can't be as hard as it looks. And so, the entire thesis I've been working towards is trying to figure out how to boil these pattern shapes down to the simplest format possible. I know that there are books of patterns, there are big box patterns, and smaller pattern companies which strive for the best blend of accuracy and user-friendliness, but when it comes to the available patterns, I've had another struggle, and that is my body type. I don't even think I have an extremely unique body, but nevertheless, the more I learn about properly fitting things to myself, the more I realize that any pattern I try is fairly incompatible with my shape. Probably the easiest solution for this would be to make or invest in a dress form of myself. Then I could just learn pattern draping. But that is not the best solution when it comes to my thesis. Because I want to simplify these patterns not just for my own sake, but in a way that is most useful and easiest for you to replicate from home. So draping them from an expensive or elaborate dress form is not going to be super useful to most of you. And that is why math exists. I think I figured it out. Not only that, but I think I boiled it down to a single simple geometric formula, and if you plug in your own measurements, you can make a conical base shape to fit you. And I know the Bacaras of the world are hissing and clutching at their Barbie skateboards and candy bars. Technically, you could do this entirely without numbers if you just used a string to take measurements and then knotted the string in specific places. But I'm just gonna use numbers. The pattern is quite simple. It's a curved shape like a fan. To draft this shape, you need to take three measurements. You need to measure your waist, the apex of your bust, and the distance between these points. Now, I think it's best to measure these with no bra. On me, it doesn't make enough of a difference to be sure, but I know that larger bust measurements can differ drastically between wearing or not wearing a bra. It makes sense not to wear one, though, because historically that's how they would have been taking measurements. My three measurements are 34 inches for the bust, 27 for the waist, and 6.25 for the space between. Though I am short-waisted, so 6.25 is not exactly average. Since we will only be drafting one side of the bodice, the bust and waist must be halved, bringing us to 17 inches and 13.5. The cheapest and easiest patterning paper to find is plain old wrapping paper. And a lot of wrapping paper nowadays has a grid printed on the backside, so bonus! First, I need to mark two points at the edge of the sheet, 6.25 inches apart. Then, I need to measure across the paper and mark a point 17 inches in and 13.5 inches in. Now, line up a yardstick, and depending on how close your bust and waist measurements are, a yardstick might not be long enough, you might need a stiff tape measure. Line it up between the two points all the way to the edge of your paper, and make another point where it intersects. Think of this point as the horizon point, like if you've ever learned perspective in a drawing class. Now you need to use this horizon point to draw your curves. Historically, this would be done by hammering a nail into your table and tying a string to it. I taped a string to the table instead. I wrapped the string around my marker a few times, which helped to keep it stable. Starting at the waist point, drag out a line well past the original waist marking, then repeat that with the bust point. Now I'm lining up a flexible measuring tape to find the 13.5 and 17 inch points on the new curved lines. Then use your yardstick and line it up between the two new points and the horizon point. You'll know you did it right if those three points line up pretty much evenly. Draw a new line between the bust and waist point. And that is the completed shape. So when I was working on this, I put a call out on Instagram and a ton of people sent me their measurements. I took the first 15 responders and tried out this formula with the smallest set and with the largest set. Then I calculated all of the measurements together and I found that a 38.5 inch bust and a 32 inch waist was both the average and the median set of measurements. I also plugged these measurements into the formula and they all worked. Now four isn't enough to guarantee the formula, but it does seem to be consistent. Now there is one more alteration I want to make on this base before I even start to make a pattern from it. 
I've noticed that I am short-waisted, but I'm even shorter-waisted in the back. I finally figured this out after reading the Keystone Guide, particularly the sections explaining the difference between a stooping form and an erect form. I disagree with Keystone that these variations have much to do with posture, though. I really think it has more to do with just your skeletal structure. On myself, the top of my hip bones just curve higher than any pattern allows for. And it's not just me. I don't often fit bodices to other people, but of those I have, two have been short-waisted. Using modern bodice patterns, we had to shorten the back by an extra half inch or more to make the bodice fit smoothly instead of wrinkling up. Now, one of those people was my sister, and it's possible that we just have similar structures, but the other was a sewing student of mine of no relation. So I'm theorizing that this is possibly common with short-waisted people, and if you are short-waisted and you struggle with fit, maybe you should look into this. I really want an x-ray of myself now. Also, I don't make pants very often, but when I do, I've also found that I need to shorten the crotch in the front, which if you're taking wedges out of the back above the waist and out of the front below the waist, that means that you're essentially angling or tilting the waistline. Can your hips be tilted? Is that a thing? So it will be much easier if I account for this proportional off-kilterness before even starting my pattern. How I'll do this is I'll draw out another curve midway down my fan shape. Then I'll cut the fan out, splitting it along this line. I'll tape it back together, overlapping the pieces in the back by about three quarters of an inch. I'm essentially taking a pie wedge out of the shape, but making it curved. And this way, I shouldn't have to alter the waistlines of the individual bodice pieces later. To finish it, I can just trace out the altered shape using a ruler to straighten the center front and center back lines. Now, I want to get on Illustrator and show you some of the patterns you could extrapolate from this base shape. If you start with a shape like this, here is how it could be turned into a stay pattern. You trim one inch from the back to give it a two inch gap, for the top edge, I'm just going to freehand it, and that's the type of thing that you would want to adjust through a mock-up. You extend the lines and add another curve a couple inches down to mark the length of the tabs. Then add the seam placement, either making it up or basing it off of a historical design. They can curve inward to the waist, creating space for waist reduction, but then I must curve them back out past the waist point and mark the tabs. Then the pieces can be separated and further adjusted. It is very simple, very basic, and working with a mock-up of this pattern would allow you to further fine-tune it to your body. The important thing is you are starting from you, rather than from a tracing of a garment with years of wear warping it to fit another person's unique torso, plus a couple centuries of decay. But how would you turn this fan into a bodice? The top edge will be a little trickier and will definitely require a mock-up. You could even cut out the mock-up with an extra two to three inches so that when you try it on, you have plenty of room to draw the neckline and underarms right on your body. It will still take a lot of trial and error, but at least you have somewhere to start. Then you place your seams, deciding how many back panels you want and where you want them. These seams will need to curve, like the stay seams, and you can guesstimate that and adjust it through the mock-up. And this is a basic bodice pattern, which could be chopped up differently and customized for each project if you want. You can change the seams, cut it away in the front for a stomacher, add tabs, change the shape of the bottom edge or the neckline, add a pleated jacket skirt, any of that could be done from the same basic but well-fitting bodice pattern. And I haven't done the experiments yet, but logically, looking at the shapes, I think the basic fan shape could be used to draft almost any conical bodice. All the way from a kirtle through Tudor bodices, Elizabethan, 18th century, right up to Regency short stays. And more, I think that you could use it to draft yokes or collars or ruffles or any similar curved shape on any scale. Since coming up with this formula, I have used it to draft an Outlander bodice, which I made just in time for Halloween. It was a bit of a rush job and the pattern didn't turn out perfect, mostly in the sleeves and and one part of the hips where I actually mixed up the pieces when I was cutting them out. But despite all of that, it is still one of the best fitting bodices I've ever made. And I really think it's because I started from this shape. But a breakdown of making that pattern and that bodice will be the next sewing video. So stay tuned.